Ladies and gentlemen, it's 7.30 p.m. This is the American Fork City Council meeting for August the 8th of 2017. The agenda for tonight's meeting is on the table in the center of the room. It's been posted on the state's website as required by state law, as well as posted throughout the community. Before we begin tonight's council meeting, I'd like to recognize some people in our audience. We have uh, candidates for uh, city council. Uh, Jeff Shorter is seated on the stand. Barbara Christiansen and Stacy Carroll have thrown their hats in the ring to run for city council. And uh, I'd ask them to stand and say a few words if you feel so inclined. A few words. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I like you, Barbara. <laughs> Stacy, anything you want to say? Uh, no, I'm Stacy. Thank <laughs> you, Stacy. That was Barbara, but <laughs> <laughs> anything you want to add? So inclined. <laughs> All right, you're so inclined. Very good. Have two candidates for mayor. That being Mayor F Candidate Brad Frost and Mayor Candidate Carlton Bowen. Anything you would like to say? Let the games begin. <laughs> City Mayor, and I think we have a great city. I'm pleased and honored to, to have been able to serve as a councilman in these past four years. Thank you. The election is a week from tonight. Uh, American Fork City participates in the countywide vote by mail. If you want to cast your vote, and uh, you can do it at the library between 7 a.m. and 8 p.m. next Tuesday in the uh, large room at the, li the library. We will have a meeting here starting about 8.30 next Tuesday night for those of you that can't find the county's website on your own computer, and we will be scrolling through all the elections in Utah County as they get posted by Utah County uh, clerk and his team of elections officials. So we wish you all good luck and well, and thank you for being with us this evening. We'd like to begin this evening by starting with the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a prayer by our city administrator, David Bunker, after which I will conduct a roll call. Will the audience please rise? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our eternal Father in heaven, we are grateful this evening that we can gather together and do the business of the city. We are grateful for thy hand in, in this city and in the affairs of the city. We are grateful for the leaders of our community that give time and energy to support and promote the city. We're grateful for the committees and boards that also spend time and and give of their talent. We're grateful, Father, for the freedoms we enjoy, for the opportunity we have to discuss with each other those things that uh, affect all of us in our community. We're grateful for the armed forces, for the men and women who protect our country, and we pray that thou will give them a special blessing of safety and comfort. We pray that we will be able to be considerate of each other tonight as we discuss issues and that uh, the council will be led and guided in wisdom that the right decisions will be made. And we're so grateful for thy hand in all things. And we say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Bunker. I will now conduct a roll call. Councilman Barnes. Councilman Bowen. Present. Councilman Frost. Here. Councilman Shelton. Here. Councilman Shorter. Here. Thank you. We have a quorum and can conduct the business of the city. I don't see any scouts in our audience this evening, so we will open this next portion of our meeting for public comments. If anyone has a public comment I'd like to make to the mayor, the council, or the senior staff, you may come to the podium and make that comment at this time. Good 
appreciate the opportunity here. Uh, here to voice a little disgust with the uh, between planning commission, city council, and the rest. I was supposed to be on the agenda tonight for uh, being annexed into American Fork. It's been on the uh, agenda. Uh, planned for the tonight. And as of last Thursday afternoon, uh, Mary Lynn said, Ben, you've got one more piece of paper to you sign it. I signed it. Got there on time. It was on the agenda. And I started looking through the agenda when it was posted on Monday. I'm no longer up. No phone calls, no discussion, nothing. Not a reason for it, just pulled off the agenda. Now you guys may know that it was on the agenda and then pulled for some reason. I don't even know the particular reason for it right now. I get told by Mr. Conker just a few minutes ago that it's the water shares. You've had the water shares since March 3rd of 2016 a year and a half ago, and no discussion. In fact, it's been used for annexation between the Mitchells, the Searles, and the rest. It's been used for our annexations, even by me. But now you say, for some reason, okay, well, we'll talk about it. You have to push me back until we get back on the agenda, possibly on the 29th. Then back on the planning commission, two or three weeks later than that. And it keeps going on and on and on. I don't, you know, my work, I have to work for a living. Part of that work is annexations, development, and sales. That's what I do for a living. I've been doing it since 1971. At least a telephone call, not an excuse, not to take all we pulled it. Now, I, I'm just a little ticked, but the city, I, I, worked with the planning commission with the city for a long time here in America. And we worked quite well together with the planning commission and the city council. But no discussions, no phone calls, no nothing is, is disgusting to me. Because it's my livelihood. If you don't have a livelihood, if Jeff goes up and nobody in the office, what does he do? Does he wait for somebody to come in two or three weeks later? No, he has to go out and find the work. This is my work. This is my livelihood. And I'm not getting any younger at it. And I would have appreciated a phone call. Uh, so let's discuss just in a hurry. We could have been on the agenda for the night. But no, now we're not. So I'm just, I'm voicing my disgust. That's where I am. Well, I apologize to you, Mr. Richards, because I asked the question, had you been made aware of this item and the issues that we had with your annexation, and I was told that you had been made aware of it, so I apologize to you. It wasn't my intention to shun you in any way, shape, or form, but we will get to the bottom of it, and you will be on the 29th one way or the other, Dan. Okay? That helps a little team bit. Well, I, I think I just echo that, that hopefully as we set expectations with people that if we're not going to meet those expectations i think your request of a courtesy call is the least we can be able to do so i hope that while it's unfortunate the way this took place uh, the council didn't really have any involvement in this at all it was all administrative in nature um, that we can learn from that and know that we need to make that common sense courtesy call down the road so well it was on for the eighth it was terry lynn told me it was correct and now I, it's not. Right. Any other comments to be made this evening? I'm her backup support. Yeah, he's my backup. <laughs> anyway, I'm Cassie Allred, and I'm sure you all know I'm here. I was uh, really concerned when I found out my egg protected area was on the agenda tonight. Um, by state law, you're supposed to notify me about anything that's going on, changes, uh, if we have to reapply, and I haven't heard anything. So I was a little upset, I guess I should say, you know, it's a uh, 
matter of trust and I want to keep my trust of all of you but I wonder what you're trying to hide when I'm not notified uh, and we, we brought the subject up we yeah and I emailed every one of you on June 27th uh, the mayor did contact me back on the 28th but Nothing about modification. He uh, told me that the county was still over my ag protected area, which you are really the governing body of it since I'm in the city. Um, I've always been open for discussion with the city, so this really kind of upsets me that you're doing this without even contacting us. It, it. Uh, you kind of lose a little bit of trust you know we think what's going on behind closed doors yeah. type of thing so we just want it to be transparent yeah and you're talking about uh, modification what is this modification um where, where i haven't been notified i don't know what's going on for sure we, we have an idea thanks to nestor did Nestor not meet with you this morning? He yes. Did, and that's the first we heard of this. But I need to hear from you what this modification, since you are the governing body. Well, we tried to get a hold of you, and we were told that you were out of the country until you were coming home yesterday, and that's yes. why we sent Nestor down this morning. But as we look at growth in the future on the south side of the community and the potential for a vineyard connector, we have looked at your ag protection zone and, and tonight we will discuss this and send it back to the planning commission for their review and approval and uh, ask them to make some recommendations where a certain portion of that potential vineyard connector could be excluded from your ag protection zone so that as we have other growth in the area that that will not hamper the completion of that vineyard connector because that is a major north-south mm -hmm. arterial road for the people going to be living south of the freeway in American Fork. So that's what the context is. It's an action item. The whole purpose of it tonight is to discuss it and to send it back to the Planning Commission who do the public comment, who the, the public hearings and hear the comments and look over what the best plan would be for that vineyard connector. So. Anything you want to add, Mr. Bunker? Yes. Um, you know, again, like the mayor mentioned tonight, that this item will be initially discussed, and then it's up to the legislative body if they would like the Planning Commission to, to research that further and take, you know, more public comment, get, get more input on that. So there's no action as far as the actual ag protection tonight. It's just that the legislative body needs to direct the Planning Commission to look into that. Then after the Planning Commission does their job, then it would then come back to this legislative body. So there's a lot that has to, you know, there's a lot of opportunity there for, for discussion. Um, and also there's a lot of coordination that has to uh, be had with uh, different agencies like UDOT. And so I think there's, there's still a lot of information to gather there. So this is just the very first step. There's no action being taken tonight as far as the actual ag protection. It's just the legislative body asking the Planning Commission to take a look at it. But we realize your timing on that ag protection zone and the approvals of that ag protection zone and what that timing is. And we maybe hurried it on this end so it wouldn't have to be hurried on the back end. Okay? okay. So I apologize to you, Cassie, Neil. Again, we had good intentions and we tried, but unfortunately, yeah. travel and other things made it so it was the last minute thing so i apologize to yeah. you for that even when we are traveling there's other people that's connected with this that yeah, you know, family, yeah. if you send a letter someone will get it okay All so right. and just okay. out of curiosity adam when it goes to planning commission will this be an item that they put to sign up and, and talk about it as part of their policy and procedures for the planning commission what was that, sorry? So the Planning Commission adopted a little while ago and they talk about changing stuff to certain properties. They go out and put a sign. Yeah, there's a sign. It's small, but it's right. a sign. Right. And so we will still do that in relationship to this item when it goes to the Planning it's Commission. It's done because it goes next week. Okay. And then they'll, they'll look, for them, look for them to forward a recommendation back to you. Okay. 
it's a small sign. Right. Uh, and it doesn't have any information. It says to call the number. Yeah. So, okay. It, I think it's a lot better than what we used to do, which was nothing. So something's yeah. better than nothing. Well, so you, we're, we're making you, slow by, progress here. By state law, you have to post that for the ag protected. If you're going to make any modification, anything, it has sure, to be Sure, I think that posted. would be later in the process, not at this stage, but later in the process okay. is where that comes into play. Okay, but right. I mean, my, if the alignment of the vineyard connector won't change if that's what it's uh, going to be through the bottom piece of my property, I don't have a problem with that. We've always said we would rather have it south. So that's, you've done what we've asked for. Um, if you want to just reauthorize the agriculture protected area as it is, how as it stands, um, I will agree to that's that not the current road map. alignment. That's not the current map, Vendelin. It's not? Nope, that isn't the current one. It goes further south than that, Cassie. So it won't. This is the one that ties up with 200 South and then cuts the corner off of your property above 200 South. At the present time, it's going that's further right. South and comes up along through. Yeah, that's the yeah, old we, map. Ne Nestor showed us that. Okay, this very good. So we, we yeah. As long as you've yeah. seen what that and plan is that we are proposing to you, Doc. So. Yeah. yeah, this alignment. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Because, I, I mean, we, we are agreeable with that. Good. I appreciate that. Yeah, I was just, I hate to see everybody go through a lot of work and have to re-survey, do everything when we are agreeable to it. I understand. Okay. We appreciate your willingness to be agreeable with us. Well, it's got to go somewhere, and this is the best option. <laughs> yeah, it is. It really is. Thank you. Thank you, Cassie. Thank you. Any other comments at this time? Hearing none, we'll close the public comment portion of our meeting. We will have the city administrator's report at this time. Mr. Bunker. Yeah, Mayor and Council, we just uh, have just a couple of items. Um, there's a lot of work going on in the Veterans Hall right now. They're redoing some uh, stucco work on the outside, and also they're, they've replaced uh, some some parts and uh, like the water heater and different things inside the, the unit. They're going to repaint that as well. So there is some work there going on. If you want to go over and take a look, that'd be great. Uh, the police department had a, had the night out against crime last week. It was a great event. Uh, lots of people came and, and participated in that. Would like to thank the police department for their good work and, and inviting the community to come and get to know them and uh, help them understand uh, what, what the community's needs are and how the police department can help them. Um, we um, have a, there, there's a few uh, gated or private subdivisions throughout the city that uh, have codes on gates. And we would ask any uh, HOAs or any uh, subdivisions that have those to be aware that if they change those codes, they need to forward them to the fire department. Uh, it's hard for them to respond to uh, issues, incidences, fires within a gated community if they can't get in. And so uh, they, they take other measures if they have to. We would rather not uh, have to take a gate down and then have to put it back up later. Um, the fire department also has received a grant and they have some carbon monoxide and smoke detectors available at the fire department through a grant um, and they've partnered up with Walmart. Um, I believe there's about 80 uh, smoke detectors available. So if the, anyone in the community is interested in one of those units, then please contact the city or go over to the fire department and they would be happy to help you with one of those. And then also um, coming up, there will be a, um, a press event for the, um, let me grab this real quick, Firehouse Subs um, in cooperation with uh, the Public Safety Foundation that they established. Um, they give more than uh, they gave more than eighty one thousand dollars worth of grants to fire departments within Utah County, and uh, I believe our portion of that was around thirty four thousand dollars. 
and uh, we used that to get some equipment and it was much needed equipment and we would just like to thank firehouse subs for their donation of that grant to our fire department and uh, we encourage everyone to go to this uh, this event it will be held tuesday august 22nd at 10 a.m at firehouse subs and here on uh, 218 northwest state um, at their at their location there so just want to say thank you to firehouse subs that's all i have thanks for that report council reports concerning committee assignments councilman barnes um just a couple of things the first one was not an assignment but uh i took the opportunity to to attend the police night out um, i really enjoy it it's it's a lot of fun uh, there were a lot of good activities including um many smiles as uh, policemen went down in the water with the dunking machine um, but it was just fun to stand back unobserved and and watch the interaction of Did the you kids not volunteer for the dunking machine i wasn't offered the chance to volunteer <laughs> don't do it next year either <laughs> um but it's just fun to watch the interaction of the kids and the police and um uh, the good things that happen in this community and that was a it was a good evening uh, the park was pretty full and I thought it went very well uh, these are in the order of they the way they happened yesterday morning at 10 a.m. we had a cemetery committee meeting uh, the first of our meetings to start planning for Veterans Day um, Veterans Day is November the 11th I think we all know that this year it falls on a Saturday there's been some discussion whether it's Friday or Saturday. I'm here to say it will be Saturday because that is November the 11th. Uh, we will be at the junior high and we'll give you more detail in the future. We're working on the program and stuff. But again, uh, newspaper, whoever wants to uh, put it in, it will be Saturday, November the 11th. And uh, the last item, I assume Councilman Shelton will talk a little more about this, uh, but the concerts in the park. Um, I went last night and it was music that I remember and a bunch of you probably would have enjoyed it. It was Beatles, a lot of Beatles stuff and other things from the 60s. And it was not so loud that I went home with a headache and it was quite enjoyable. It's amazing how much sound two people can make. Um, I thought there was a whole band up there until I looked up and saw one guy's beating the drum with his leg and playing the guitar and singing and doing something else all at the same time. But it was a good concert. But the other thing I wanted to comment on is, is, is just uh, that venue is so great for a concert like that. Uh, Rob, uh, Councilman Shel Shelton will talk about it, but there's one, there, one more next week. Just a nice evening to go over there and sit in the shade of the trees and enjoy good music and good company and take some uh, food there and uh, just enjoy the evening. But... Uh, it was, again, just a good community activity. And that's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Councilman Bowen. Thank you, Mayor. The committees I'm assigned to late meet later in the month, and I have nothing to report at this time. Thank you, sir. Councilman Frost. Uh, Mayor, nothing to report tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Shelton. Thanks, Mayor. As was mentioned, we had our concerts in the park. Uh, last one will be this Monday. It'll be Joshua Creek at 7 p.m. at the amphitheater. So we really appreciate Doug Smith uh, Auto for sponsoring that free event for the uh, residents to be able to come. And uh, it is a, a good, enjoyable time. So we expect to have uh, them as our finale for this year and then look forward to an enjoyable there next year. Uh, we do have the Still Days Committee that still is uh, alive and well and still working on Still Days for next year. Uh, so we've got a few action items on tonight for it. Uh, we will be transferring power from one committee chair to the next in the next four weeks, and we'll bring some names, Mayor, of recommendations of other appointees probably in the month of September to be appointed. Uh, as far as the dispatch service is concerned, they are meeting uh, on Thursday and will be considering the Nephi and Juab County agreement. Um, if you have any concerns about that, let me know. Um, it's basically a contract for service. It does not let them buy into the district. It's just to allow us to um, 
get some economies of scale and it will provide uh, a financial benefit to the district, but does not give them any voting power, which I think uh, helps. So we're not diluting the district at all, but are helping out financially that direction. And that's my report, Mayor. Thanks for that report, Councilman. Councilman Shorter. Nothing to report, Mayor. Thank you. For the Mayor's report, uh, it was touched on by Mr. Bunker, but last year our fire department passed out 200 smoke detectors and CO2 detectors. That's, uh, they continually work with Walmart and other agencies to get these. Uh, they are used to protect our citizenry. And uh, if someone's in a hard ship, many of our senior citizens ask the fire department to deliver one. And while you're here, why don't you install it for us too? And they're welcome to do that. Speaking of our fire department, I believe on the 16th of August, they are having a class for the mayor and council members on CPR and how to use the, tell me the name of the machines. ADT, okay. The shockers that we have in all of our public buildings, for lack of a better word, if someone is in a hen dress, you can uh, activate that and uh, show us how to make that work. It'll be about an hour and a half in duration, but that will make us certified then. And I ask that we that give the council and the mayor a chance to do it first before we ask the rest of the citizens or the rest of the employees of American Fork City to take that particular training. That's the mayor's report. We'll move on to our common consent agenda. Our common consent agenda includes approval of the minutes of July 18th work session, approval of the minutes of the July 25th regular city council session, and approval of an authorization to release an improvements construction guarantee in the amount of $125,680.30 and to issue a notice of acceptance for the Mitchell Meadows Plant B subdivision construction of private or public improvements located at 10,000 North 900 West. Is there a motion to approve the common consent agenda as presented? So moved, Mayor. Thank you, Councilman Frost. Is there a second? I'll second with the uh, appreciation to staff. I really enjoyed seeing a lot of the seamless docs documents being used. I'd love to get any feedback about the efficiency of that, but I think that's great moving to more of a paperless system. So thank you, Mayor. I have a motion by Councilman Frost, seconded by Councilman Shelton. Any discussion on the motion? Just a, a quick question. I noticed one of the findings um, in the motion was that there were no liens and um, just wanted to confirm with the city that that we had verified that there are no outstanding liens. There's the owner of the property right there. You can ask Mr. Richards. Take me down. Give him a bond. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. Hearing no more, I'll call for a vote. I'll take a voice vote individually. Councilman Barnes. Aye. Councilman Bowen. Aye. Councilman Frost. Aye. Councilman Shelton. Aye. Councilman Shorter. Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. We will now move on to action item number one, ratification of city bills for payment. These have been in your drop box. There's a number of them for over $25,000. Any questions on this item? I just um, noticed that we had nine vehicles in the uh, purchase requests over 25,000 for about a quarter million dollars. Uh, and that's the most vehicles we've ever purchased at one time that I'm aware of since I've been on the council. Um, we've done a couple here, a couple there. We had a schedule for the police vehicles where they were um, replaced at the rate of about two every year to keep their fleet from getting too old. But um, just seems to me like a lot of money that could better be spent on the roads so those vehicles drive on by city employees and by lots of others too. So um, th there is a number of vehicles there. Um, we did add three new police officers into this budget. So it's tough for them to hoof it. So we wanted to give them a car. Um, and then the, uh, I don't know that we've maintained that uh, rotation on those police vehicles in the past like we had intended. So I think there's a number of vehicles that were 
due for replacement that were not, that were held off. And so that's, uh, there is more than normal, but part of that is that, that the police department has grown. And the other part is to keep up with the plan that uh, for, for rotation on those units. I know we've approved uh, other vehicle purchases besides these nine in the last 12 month period. Uh, anyway, how many, so there's three police vehicles. What are the other six vehicles? They're all police vehicles. Uh, my point there was that we have three new police officers that need a unit to drive. And so there's three right there off the bat. The other six are the rotation uh, in the department. So they're all police vehicles. There's, there's none that are not in that, in that request. And I believe this was all in the budget we approved That's into right. the uh, capital improvement plan and it lines all that out. And so um, I feel good going ahead, Mayor, with that and uh, make a motion to approve city bills, our city payments uh, of purchase requests over 25,000 as presented. I have a motion by Councilman Shelton. Do I hear a second? Second. Seconded by Councilman Shorter. Any questions on this motion? Mayor, Mayor, I, Mayor I move that um, we amend the motion to include four city vehicles um, with the remainder of the um, amount going to the Streets Capital Improvement Fund. Just to I have a motion and a second on the floor. An amendment is in order to that motion. Do I hear a second on the amendment? Just a quick question, uh, just out of curiosity, Carlton, have you talked with the police department about the ramifications of what that would do at all to them? I have not, but I know that okay. we have uh, added vehicles to their fleet in the past 12 months. Okay, I just wanna make sure we've, we're making a motion without checking what the ramifications of such, so. I will ask again, there's a modification to the motion on the floor. Do I hear a second on the modification? The modified motion dies for lack of a second. We will go back to the original motion. I have a motion and a second. I will call for a voice vote. Councilman Barnes. Aye. Councilman Shelton. Aye. Councilman Bowen. Nay. Councilman Frost. Aye. Councilman Shorter. Aye. Thank you, motion carries. Item number two, review and action. Get my bifocal straight here. Review an action on an ordinance providing restrictions and regulations over the American Fork City watershed area to protect the city's water quality. We are happy to have with us Mr. Nathan Bracken from Smith Harvigson, who is our consultant and has been working with city staff and elected officials on the American Fork Canyon watershed and American Fork City's water protection ordinance for some time. He's met with both the Forest Service and the National Park Service, the irrigation companies of the several communities that take water from the American Fork Canyon, as well as city staff and council members, and is here to answer any questions that you may have regarding this item on the agenda. Nathan, would you take the microphone, please? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, you should have received a revised version of the ordinance. Uh, we got some additional comments from stakeholders over the weekend. I chatted with David. They're, they're really just two key changes from what you've seen before. The first is a change to the definition of water course. I had included a very expansive definition based upon the environmental code, in part because the underlying ordinance that gives the city authority to do this is 10-8-15. And that's very expansive too. It gives the city the ability to regulate all streams and other sources from which it draws water. It doesn't define the term other sources. So I had thought, well, other sources is kind of vague. Let's just use what the state says because we can't regulate more than the state. But the, the comments and in talking with David and thinking about it more, let's just do what 10-815 says, and that's the language that's included there. And it basically just, um, and I'll just quote it for the folks here in the room who may not have seen it, that water course means all reservoir streams, canals, ditches, pipes, and drains used in and necessary for the construction, maintenance, and operation of the city's waterworks and over all streams or sources from which the water is taken within the watershed area. Um, again, it, over all streams and sources is the statutory jurisdiction. 
And for the benefit of everyone who hasn't particularly been involved here, the purpose of this statute is to give the city, I think, backstop authority, not primary regulatory authority, but the ability to oversee what happens in its watershed area. It's limited jurisdictional authority. It extends 15 miles up from the point of diversion and 300 feet to each side. Uh, the other change is just a, a semantics change to make sure that it lines up with the ordinance again, and that is the ordinance authorizes the city to enact, I'm sorry, the, the statute authorizes the city to enact ordinances and regulations. We had used the term rules. We've replaced that with the term ordinance. Other than that, those were the only changes based upon the draft that was published in, in, the, uh, in the notice. Thank you, Councillor. Mayor, I'd move to adopt the resolution approving the restrictions and regulations over American Fork City watershed area to protect the city's water quality. Thank you for that motion, Councilman Shorter. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Councilman Frost. Any questions on this motion? Yeah, I had just a question and a comment. Um, so Utah, the Utah County Health Department is the primary regulator, is that correct? That's true, yes. Okay, and on the, is there a secondary regulator to, um, I noticed on the permit application that's included as part of the ordinance, uh, that it had footnote one and footnote two, but it looked like they said exactly the same thing. They both said Utah County Health Department. Um, is there some other, it seems like it would just be footnote one and it would be the County Health Department. Is there some other organization involved also? It depends on the facility that's being constructed. Usually it's the, the, the County Health Department. We've defined this to, basically the idea here is if you go and you wanna build, for instance, a sewer system, some type of a septic or a vault privy. You'd go and you get your permit from the county and then you'd come and you would give us uh, the permit and we'd double check it to make sure that it, it, it lines up. And, and that's, that's the basic gist of it. Uh, there are some situations, I think, depending on what you're building that someone else may be or the laws may change. We've done this broadly, so the most part of it is gonna be the county, but if, if something changes in that sense, what we want are all the applicable permits that you've had to receive otherwise. Then my comment, Mayor, was just, um uh, well, I appreciate the, it, it appears to me that you've narrowed this ordinance um, considerably from what it originally was, which I appreciate. Um, I think the idea behind it sounds reasonable, you know, to uh, try to protect the city's watershed. Um, my concern is just that it's already regulated by the county, and it really seems redundant to make someone that's going to do something in the um, you know, up there to go to the county, get a permit, and then come to the city, get another permit, and attach a copy of the county permit. And so I just, um, I always like to think of these things from the perspective of the person that's maybe, you know, building a cabin or holding an event or doing something. And, um, you know, the extra hoops, <laughs> I, I don't think appre people appreciate, especially when they're, I don't really view it as being substantive because it's really just relying on the county as the primary regulator. So that's just my input. It, it does, there are some caveats to that, and basically that is the gist of it, but it does give the city to the ability to enact its own protections in addition to that if it feels that the, the permits and the other protections haven't been sufficient. And I think that's part of the concern is that heretofore without this type of ordinance, the city doesn't really have the say in what happens up there, and it may not always agree with what the county does. So uh, yes, and we have taken into account the regulatory aspect of this and that's why we spoke with most of the folks we could think of that were part of the regulated community and and none of them as i understand have, have expressed any objections to them we've worked through them we're not charging any permit fees we're not charging any money for instance if you want to build a vault pretty from the county you have to pay a twenty five hundred dollar bond we're not requesting any of that we're just asking for a seat at the table at least that's the the concept here and those were the instructions i received from from the city and how to put it together I really appreciate all your hard work, Nathan. I know this has been going on for a long time, and a lot of work's been gone into it. I appreciate your expertise. Just I personally, as one council member, being involved in the little bit that I was uh, over the last two years with the concerns of the watershed, I personally have lost a lot of confidence in the state and the county to efficiently regulate that. Um, I think it's great to keep them as a primary, but I do like the idea that at least we have a seat at the table where before we, we didn't. So thank you for that. And I just wanted to clarify too, um, this has nothing to do with um, like the dam rehabilitation that happened. This wouldn't have impacted that at all. And that's absolutely true. It's limited authority. Again, it, it, whenever you have any type of extra territorial jurisdiction, it's always going to be limited. And here, the primary focus of the statute is, is basically sewage 
and animals and, and, and those types of things. But the concern, as, as I've understood in working with you folks over the last year or so, is that we're going to see increased use and in we're going to see per perhaps increased demand for septic tanks, for portable toilets, for vault privies, for those types of things. And, and you're right, it, it's not going to deal with the, the dam rehabilitation issue. It's not going to deal with the abandoned hard rock mine stuff. None of that is within, within the city's purview or jurisdiction under this statute. Those are the purview of for abandoned mine issues, EPA. Uh, a lot of the other things with water quality are fall under the state. So we don't have the ability to regulate that. But the responsibility for the health, safety, and welfare of the citizens of American Fork rest with this group here. And that's why I think that we should have the ordinance and not rely on Utah County and their resources to look out for what's best interest for the residents of American Fork City. And that's why I'm for this ordinance. I would ask it to move forward. Yeah, and I would agree. I think when you're talking something as precious as water and water is life, that having a couple sets of eyes on it is not a bad thing. And so I, I'm supportive of this as well. So thank you. And, and I really appreciate your reach out, Nathan. It has been, I think, unprecedented. It's been probably, what, a year <laughs> of, of reaching out to private uh, landowners, the county. I mean, we, we met with the county. We, uh, it's, it's been uh, something that's done and been in concert with all these other agencies. And so... Uh, and we've, we've applied it to be beholden to this law. So thank you for your hard work and efforts. My pleasure. May if I may just, I want to add my two cents worth. This affects the city of American Fork more than it does anybody else. Past experience has shown that Utah County has not been the best group to work with on water issues up our canyon. And so I personally think this is absolutely necessary and I'm glad to see it being done and two sets of eyes I agree I think that's good and when we're talking about the drinking water that we're going to drink I think two sets of eyes is really good and a little bit of extra work to protect that without a lot of expense a little work I agree with you Councilman Bowen it does take a little more work but in the interest of 30,000 people who live in this community, I think it's a very, very small price to pay. So I'm totally in favor of it. Thank you. I have a motion by Councilman Shorter, seconded by Councilman Frost. I will take a voice vote. Councilman Barnes. Aye. Councilman Bowen. Nay. Councilman Frost. Aye. Councilman Shelton. Aye. Councilman Shorter. Aye. Thank you, motion carries. Item number three, review and action on an ordinance regulating the parking in the vicinity of the Marion Fork High School. We held a public hearing on this earlier. I believe that uh, Casey Wright was the gentleman that drafted our ordinance and he can help us if we have questions relative to the form or intent. We can ask Mr. Bunker to enlighten us a little bit if you have questions on the intent of this ordinance. The intent is to expand the current parking area for students around the high school to be restricted parking to be held to the property owners that own those homes and the frontage in front of their property. And I think the only question I really had, David, was this just amends the current thing that's there. So the signage requirements, all of that's going to go up so people aren't going to have to grab a tape measure and go out a quarter mile to find out where this is at. It's going to be clearly marked, identifiable, um, and it'll be the same permitting process that we've had in the past. Okay. Because it won't necessarily be everywhere within that quarter mile radius. There will be designated areas that will be able to be set out as the city as is necessary. Up to a quarter mile. But anywhere within that circle right. could be designated, but it's up to the city to designate exactly which lot. Mayor, I'd move to approve uh, the ordinance regulating parking in the vicinity of American Fork High School. Thank you for that motion, Councilman Shorter. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Second by Councilman Shelton. Any questions on this motion? Just a kind of a question, comment. Um, I've been hit a number of times, almost physically, literally, in the last couple of months about the city passing ordinances and not enforcing them. I am totally in favor of this. 
and I'm totally in favor of 35 policemen going up there and issuing tickets all day long so that people can't say we're not enforcing our ordinances. And I understand there are always a few bad apples. Those cars ought to be towed. The rest of them can just be ticketed, in my opinion. But I'm for this. We live in a community, and the only way communities can survive is if we're all decent, law-abiding people, and we are considerate of those around us. And I think some kids need to learn some lessons about that. And the pocketbook usually, unless mom's paying for it, the pocketbook is usually a good way to help them learn, so. All right. There's a problem with um, parking at American Fork High School um, in the so the district issues passes to the students that the students actually pay for and um, the district issues the high school issues more uh, passes than there are parking spots and by the looks of how many people park you know in the neighborhoods and stuff it's it's not an insignificant number that they oversell Kind of like the airlines, except for they don't give you a couple hundred bucks when they bump you. Um, so I just I think I think the solution to this. Um, I mean I think I would, you know, maintain what's currently in place as far as what's designated. I am concerned though about opening that up. I think the council should really designate the spots and not have it be. Lucy Goosey, I think we're probably in a stronger legal position that way, but um, but the streets are public. I get that too. I think the real solution here is for the district to um, provide more parking. I mean, they really need to acquire some additional land or some or use some of the land that they currently have as part of the high school campus and convert it to parking and um, provide enough um, stalls to you know enough parking spaces to accommodate the number of uh, passes that they're selling I think that's really the solution here well councilman okay. next time I meet with the leadership of the Alpine School District sir I will invite you in because I've been talked until I'm blue in the face and I've not got any place so obviously maybe I'll give you a chance to make that happen but right now we've not been successful enact some legislation at the state level requiring the district schools to do that. We could also work with the state school board. But I, I, I understand that you have um, communicated with the district mayor, and I appreciate that. Okay. I have a motion and a second on the resolution on the expansion of the parking limits around American Fork High School. I will take a voice vote. Councilman Barnes. Aye. Councilman Bowen. Name. Councilman Frost. Aye. Councilman Shelton. Aye. Councilman Shorter. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Item number four, review and action on a resolution to submit the city's proposed modification to the agricultural protection area located in the vicinity of 1200 West and 200 South to the Planning Commission for review and recommendations. We heard from the All Reds earlier tonight Regarding this item, I think that uh, it was discussed that we were trying to work with a acceptable alignment of the vineyard connector that would accommodate future growth on the south side of Pioneer Crossing and the freeway. And uh, therefore, we needed to modify that ag protection zone so that it would allow some future development of the vineyard connector in that area. Is there any questions on this item? I'll let. Uh, we have members of the engineering department here, and well as Mr. Bunker. If you've got questions, they can answer your questions. I had just a question or two, Mayor. Um, first of all, I think this was just uh, recently put on the agenda, right? The, we received an amended agenda, and I believe this is the item that was added. Is that correct? Uh, yes, it was okay. added. So I, I think the council was, uh, as far as I know, we weren't aware of this either until in the past 24 hours or so. Um, I know as mentioned earlier, the purpose for, so just to be clear about what this does, this opens up the Ag Protection Zone for the Planning Commission to review what's in the zone, what's, what could be moved out of the zone, what could be modified in the zone. And, um, and then the Planning Commission would send those recommendations back to the council to approve or disapprove of. Um, I know it was mentioned previously that uh, we're doing this for the Vineyard Connector, which is a road 
down by Utah Lake in the south part of American Fork City that is um, planned. Um, and we also have, though, down there the transit-oriented development area, the Patriot, the so-called Patriot Station, Front Runner Station development that's proposed. And um, yeah, I say so-called because uh, that's the current developer. And uh, if that works out, great. I think it's a great name. Um, anyway, there's there's a large development down there that's planned, and so this is this is pretty relevant uh, whether or not the you know the parcels in this zone get changed or not. And so I just wanted to ask you, Mayor, are there any other um, pieces of land or parcels that you're aware of that um, you know are being contemplated to be modified when this goes to the Planning Commission? Well. UDOT's first swipe at the Vineyard Connector put it right through the core area of our TOD, and that wasn't acceptable because that would split that right in half. And so we went back to them and says, what can we do to move this further to the west? Lehigh also wants it to go further to the west because they want it to intercept Pioneer Crossing and then continue north and tie on to Lehigh's, and I believe it's 500 south that parallels the railroad tracks and goes west. That's an existing road that was stopped when the overpass was built for the railroad. The bottom line is Lehigh is in, a cons in consonance with this, and we ask what we could do, and they says, well, we can't touch this. This is ag-protected property. We've got to stay where we are. And we said, well, let us see if we can't work with the All Reds and release some area of that that would allow the Vineyard Connector to go further to the south and further to the west, and that would benefit the entire community as far as that arterial class road goes and for the benefit of the TOD. To my knowledge, this is the only one that we are dealing with at this time, sir. Mayor, could I, could I just chime in? There is, there is a section on 200 South, which is a major uh, transportation road uh, that will be important to that TOD area. So 200 South also needs to be widened so there may be a little bit of property on either side of the existing road that would also need to be looked right. at, considered. And as yeah. part of that process going to the Planning Commission, we will, I assume, Adam, be working with all of those affected individuals, talking with them as it goes through a public comment period with the, the Planning Commission. Um, right now, it's just the, the all red family parcels because that's where the ag protection is. And so those are the areas that we're looking at. Right, there'll be a public comment period where they can be able to come in and voice yes, their concerns. We've a public awesome, thank you. And okay. Cassie, we'd love to be transparent. I love it when we're transparent. I think your comments about lack of trust being lost when we're not transparent is very key. So uh, hopefully we can keep that good working relationship and we appreciate working with you. Mayor, I'd move to approve the resolution to submit the city's proposed modification to the agricultural protection area located in the vicinity of 1200 West 200 South to the Planning Commission for review and recommendation. Thank you for that motion, Councilman Shorter. Do I hear a second? I'll second that, Mayor. Seconded by Councilman Frost. Any questions on this motion? Hearing none, I will take a voice vote. Councilman Barnes. Aye. Councilman Bowen. Nay. Councilman Frost. Aye. Councilman Shelton. Aye. Councilman Shorter. Aye. Thank you, motion carries. Now the real fireworks at the meeting. <laughs> Did bring a small show. Moving on to item number five. Review and action on a contract with Fireworks West International for the 2018 Steel Days Fireworks Show. I will state that Mr. Shelton made me aware of this when the Fireworks International sent their bid for 2018 there was a little caveat on the bottom that they would reduce their price in excess of $3,000 if we could have a check to them before the end of August. So I put this on the agenda for tonight's consideration because granted, it's for next year, but when you spend $20,000 for fireworks and you're offered a $3,000 savings, that goes a long way. And so that's why it's on tonight's agenda. Councilman Shelton, you're the chair of the Steel Days Committee. 
Anything you would like to add, sir? Yeah, just that I talked with Dustin uh, with uh, Fireworks West, and he was okay with the identification language being taken out. So it's just standard that they have that in their contract. They don't have any concerns with that. We've used them for, for many years. I'm glad that I got a chance to inherit them from previous people that had done the good research because um, every year uh, we get exceptional reviews on how good of a fireworks program it is. So I just appreciate the working relationship with them as well as uh, Sam Stout, who does a phenomenal job of coordinating, choreographing, is that the right word you put up? the oohs and the ahs in the fireworks show so mayor i like saving money so i'd move to approve the contract with fireworks west international for the 2018 steel days fireworks show with indemnif indemnification language stricken as per legal counsel thank you for that motion councilman shorter do i hear a second second seconded by councilman barnes any questions on this motion hearing none i will call for a voice vote Councilman Barnes. Aye. Councilman Bowen. Aye. Councilman Frost. Aye. Councilman Shelton. Aye. Councilman Shorter. Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. Item number 6A deals with reviewing action on subdivisions, commercial projects, condominiums, and planned unit developments, including one, plan approval, two, method of satisfaction of water rights requirements, three, posting of an improvement bond or setting up a time frame for improvements to be installed, and four, authorization to sign the final plat and acceptance of all dedications to the public and to have the plat recorded. We have one such subdivision before us this evening that happens to be city property. This is the review in action on the final plat of the American Fork City Cemetery subdivision plat B located between 4th and 600 North from Center Street to 100 East. This is majority of the new part of the cemetery has now been platted and we must have that plat recorded because as you know, we sell individual cemetery lots to individual people and it is in fact a real estate transaction any questions on this item? Well, we're having a little fun tonight. I thought about uh, recusing myself because I actually own property within this parcel right here. <laughs> but uh, I hope not to use it for a very long time. So I move to approve the final plat for the American Fork City Cemetery subdivision plat B located between 400 North and 600 North from Center Street to 100 East to authorize the mayor and the city council to sign the plat accept the dedication with instruction to the city recorder to withhold recording of the plat subject to all conditions identified in the public record associated with July 19, 2017 Planning Commission meeting. I second the motion. Thank you for that motion, Councilman Frost, and the second by Councilman Bowen. Any questions on this motion? Hearing none, I will conduct a voice vote. Councilman Barnes. Aye. Councilman Bowen. Yes. Councilman Frost. Aye. Councilman Shelton. Aye. Councilman Shorter. Aye. Thank you. Motion is unanimous. I will remind the council that that plat is on the table to our left. Before you leave, please sign your name to that plat so we can get it recorded. Item seven, review and action on award of a contract for the fiscal year 2016-2017 sewer rehabilitation project to Insitiform Technologies, LLC. Let me say that our sewer department does a great job every year. We partner with Pleasant Grove City. They go out and have several miles of their existing sewer lines lined. And so does American Fork. And by bringing the two communities together, we can share the mobilization costs because in such a form comes from out of state. And when they set up, then they can do both communities at the same time, and we both enjoy quite a cost savings. If there are questions regarding this item, Mr. Bunker or representatives from engineering department can answer that. But we've used in such a form now, I think, for six or so years, and we've been very successful. We are doing about 1,200 feet this year. I beg your pardon, 12,000 feet this year, and it's the old uh, vitreous clay, 
and uh, we do have some infiltration in that particular line and the purpose of lining this is to eliminate that infiltration. I don't know if it's known by many of the citizens in our community, but because of our successes in past years in lining our sewers, we continue to have less gallonage of effluent reach the sewer treatment plant and we pay for every gallon that is treated. And because we are cutting down the amount of infiltration, TSSD has raised their rates twice in the past two years and we have not passed that raise on to the residents. We're still paying sewer rates that were there several years ago. So that's the purpose for using in situ form. It is on our capital improvements plan and we will continue to do this on an annual basis to continue to eliminate infiltration. Any, any questions what, on this item? Well, real quick, uh, remind me after this process is done, what, what is the life expectancy of this? You know, this, this new, sorry, Brad, am I gonna get you out of your chair? Yeah, I, I can I, fill that one right there. So this basically puts a PVC liner that is hardened inside the pipe and it would have the same life expectancy as a, a, as a PVC pipe so because it, talking, it is a PVC liner that, that goes solid. Years. So uh, I don't know that they have dug up any lines um, in situ form that are, uh, I started dealing with them about 20 years ago um, and those lines are in mint condition. As, as they get videoed, there's, there's just nothing wrong with them, so. Uh, so it's, it's likely it's, I'll be uh, a part of the, the motion pr that preceded this before they need to be uh, replaced, it sounds like. So <laughs> that's, a, that's a long time. So 60 years plus, you're thinking? You'll be your other property. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just a quick question. We've been working on this now for a number of years. Roughly how percentage-wise, roughly, where are we? Is there any estimate? Well, that? a lot of the original sewer that was put back in the mid-50s in American Fork, that was the technology in those days, was to use vitreous clay, and many of those are butt-jointed. They don't have bells and hubs and gaskets. They were butt-jointed, and as a result, we're trying to get through that. The sewer that's been put in recently with the PVC pipe or the C900 pipe does have gaskets and bells and hubs and is in fact watertight where the old vitreous clay is not. So we Typically are trying to upgrade concrete, yes. the old original sewer line that was put in American Ford. I think we've done about 10 to 15 percent of the city over the past several years. 10 to 15 percent of the older stuff. Correct. Well, no, of the entire city. Of the entire city. Yes, we've done. We've actually. Well, I think we'll we be will chasing see this, this for an additional yeah. 10 or 10. 10, 10 or 12 years. It, 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 it helps us with infiltration, also with roots that come into the sewer line, which can cause blockages backing up into homes, and so it protects us from both of those situations. Saves us money at the treatment facility. We don't have to treat it, and prevents backups into people's homes, which saves on insurance claims, and obviously the, the mess of the I'm, cleanup. I'm glad we're doing it. I think it's great. Um, we've done two of our oldest subdivisions. We have to do. We've done two of our oldest subdivisions, that being Columbia Village and Richland Park and going down Third East we had so many trees on both sides of Third East and upstream of that was a couple of restaurants that uh, didn't use grease traps and the roots in that line and the grease on those roots we had to go through and literally cut the roots out with a knife and then put the liner in and it has really solved a lot of the city's problems by identifying that and working ahead I think this year we're working on 500 North, uh, some Correct. of that area there, but we do have infiltration there, and this will greatly help that as well. And also segment on 100 East, south of 200 South. So we've got yeah. two segments. I, I just had two things. Number one, I, I think it's something you're really to be commended for, Mayor. I know this has been a focus um, for you throughout your uh, reign as our mayor, and I think it's a great thing that you've done um, with this capital improvement uh, to our infrastructure in this way. Um, the second comment was just I noticed in stitcher form is the uh, low bidder and I was glad to see that, that um, you know that they were lower than even what our public works department had estimated a reasonable bid would be by a few thousand dollars. Uh, so I think that's great we have this bidding process and 
and they've uh, been doing it for a long time, so I assume they'll do a great job for us, but uh, I'm supportive of this. Thank you. Thank you. I will mention American Fork City is one of the few communities in the state that TVs 100% of its sewer line every year. And we haven't had a sewer backup in our community for, I believe it's going on 12 years now. Since uh, the previous recreation director drained the pool, he has an eight inch line and an eight inch sewer line and he drained the pool and it caused sewer to come up in several homes throughout the community. That was our last time and I think that's been 12 years ago, so. Uh, that's good. Mayor, I'll go ahead and make a motion to accept the bid submitted by Institute Form Technologies LLC for the construction of the fiscal year 2016-2017 sewer rehabilitation project in the amount of $146,825 plus a 10% contingency of $14,682.50 for a total of $161,507.50 and authorized staff to proceed with preparation. Uh, of contract documents. And I think, Aaron, are you feeling a little homesick with this topic? I saw you biting your tongue a little bit back there, so. I have a motion by Councilman Shelton. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Councilman Barnes. Any questions on this motion? Hearing none, I will conduct a voice vote. Councilman Barnes. Aye. Councilman Bowen. Aye. Councilman Frost. Aye. Councilman Shelton. Aye. Councilman Shorter. Aye. Motion is unanimous. Thank you. We will move on to item number eight. Review and action on an ordinance adopting the American Fork City personnel policies and procedures. This was presented to us at a work session uh, last week. Uh, there's been some cleanup, some questions that was brought out by the council. I'd ask Mr. Bunker to take a few moments and walk us through this item. You bet. Thank you, Mayor. Um, it's been a few years since the city has, has um, uh, a formally adopted policy and procedures manual in place. Um, it is a great guide for um, our employees um, who work here. It uh, gives a lot of structure, a lot of guidance. Um, it really helps us enforce the policies that the city has with regards to our employees. Um, there's a lot of, a lot of um, issues in here that are the same as what, what has been there in here before. There are a few changes um, that we've uh, made to current, current policy. Um, we did talk about several items in the work session. Those items were addressed and uh, included in the, in the draft that you have in front of you. So hopefully uh, you've been able to notice that those have been corrected. Um, I can answer any questions that you have with regards to specifics in the in the policy manual if you would like. I would mention that this is a working document and to think that it's going to be done once and not be looked at again and corrected and improved and go on but anytime you're dealing with employees and the federal laws change the state legislature gets involved in a number of things and this is indeed a working document and will be reviewed regularly and it will be the guidelines that all of our employees will follow, but we will be looking at it regularly and updating it very often. That's correct. You know, as I, as I kind of read through this, and I think, you know, could I say I read every word? I don't know, pretty close. And, uh, I'm, and I'm sitting in the seat, too, as somebody that used to work for the city 20 years ago. And uh, now I'm sitting in a little different seat trying to think of long-term budgets, roads, and, uh, and things like that. I, I do see in this a little bit of a compromise in what we're trying to accomplish long-term financially with uh, some of the benefits. But I, I, I do think that in comparison to, you know, uh, private sectors and things like that, I do think that there's a, there's a fair balance. But I do think that there are going to be some employees that might not uh, feel, maybe feel a little left out of this with some of the new procedures, maybe a sick time buyback or things like that. But, but I think that the, within that, if you, if you read between the, read the manual, you'll see that perhaps there's not 100% buyback, but then there's a, an availability to roll over into your vacation time, things like that. 
But I do think as well that this kind of puts us in with uh, uh, surrounding cities and what they offer. And so I've had some heartburn trying to think that uh, <laughs> what used to be and what might have changed. And so, I, but I think that there is a little bit of compromise in, in this and I, I, uh, I hope that this, the employees won't view that as anything that, but that just leaders trying to um, do the best they can to provide uh, um, good roads and, and and city services, and that it does not affect their morale. And if they are, I'm happy to talk with them about it because uh, I do know we got to get something in place. And uh, and I and the other things that I've read here, I I feel like are 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 good, and I think it's important that we get something on the books as a, as a plan so we have something to refer to concrete moving forward. Uh, with that, I just had a couple items okay to kind of run through here. Um, I really do appreciate uh, the administration taking a look, and on page 11 of the uh, actual policies, I think it's page 73 in the packet, um, item H, I like how we have talked about unsuccessful candidates applying for a job will be notified within 10 days of that position being filled. So I appreciate that language being added. I think that will um, add a lot of professionalism to what we uh, are as an organization to let people know if that position has been filled or not. Uh, a couple of items I, I thought that were worth looking at um, on page 12 under the anti-nepotism uh, um, just because it's been an issue of the past. Um, well, we have two really good employees and they're re related and one gets promoted over the other um, that can cause a unique situation to occur. And I agree with all the nepotism language that's in here, but I think that we have to be careful that we're not gonna lose one of those good employees because we force them to a different position inside the city, which may be a different career path and so I, I didn't know if we could add something in item two there. I don't know if that's the best place to put it or not. But something that talks about uh, when that happens with a, a current employee is promoted over another that are related, that we um, review that and do all we can to uh, make a workable situation. And, and if we can't, then we can't. But that would be my preference is that we start there first and see what we can do to make it workable. To that end, um, that section has been modified from when we met at work session. Um, okay. I believe it ended at um, um, where it says, except as permitted by state law. Okay. We added and as approved by the city administrator following a determination that the, employee, the appointee is the only or best person available, qualified, or eligible for that position. In other words, there is a caveat there but it does need another set of eyes to look at it. It wouldn't happen automatically, but it can happen. And that language is actually taken directly out of state code. Okay. That's so what it, sure it's, fair, it's, congru right? it's congruent. Mean, yeah. We don't want That's right. any nepotism. At the same time, we want to be fair that we don't go over the line to where we have two really good, strong employees and we end up injuring one or not promoting one because of that. So uh, the other item I was looking at was uh, T... Uh, one, let me see if I can get there real quick and give you a page number. Um, scrolling through here, uh, that's going to be page 23 of the document. It talks about uh, outside employment. And on that, we've got um, item one. Um, it talks about needing to must notify his or her department director. What if we need to put in the notify and that notification needs to be put in their employee file? One well, reason is, is if that director leaves or whatever, who knows if they ever got that permission. You know, it'd be good to have that document, I think, in the employee's file. That way, if there are any concerns or questions that popped up, there was that proof that that discussion took place in the parameters of that outside employment. That's right. And, and in that section, it specifically says, that they may be required to provide written documentation. And that is exactly where that would go is into their file. Um, that needs to be an annual training as we get, as we sit down with employees and we go through the personnel file or the personnel policies. Um, and we, we train on these, all these policies so that employees can understand them. You know, we will have, there are certain sections in here where we will have them document 
if they have outside employment or if they have a conflict of interest or those kinds of things. I guess. And the, then that will be put in their file. The item that's given me the heartburn is just maybe that word may then after the word and. So if we make that must notify his or her department director and be required to provide it, that way it's not some people are doing it, some people aren't. The policy is the same across the board. Okay, and then um, section V, responding to citizen's complaints. I, I didn't know if we had uh, defined what a citizen complaint is. Is the intention there that any time, is it reporting potholes, water breaks, would that be a citizen complaint? Or are we talking about complaints against employees directly? It's, it's actually all of that. It's all complaints and suggestions for improvements from its citizens about services and functions of the city and treatment received from city employees. So it literally is, if you have an issue with a city employee, your interaction with them, and there's a complaint, we will look into every single one of those complaints and uh, respond to that. Also services or functions, if there's a pothole, absolutely that as well. Our intention here is to be responsive to the citizenry. Okay, so item B there, if a complaint cannot be resolved to the satisfaction or in a timely manner due to workload, that's where we send it up the food chain. Just my concern is in the past, we've had balls dropped where workload became so much that, that complaint got lost. I just wanna make sure I'm clear in here that those are going to be followed up on and we've got a system in place that will track that. Okay. The other item there was item E uh, under the chapter three and that's going to be um, on holiday pay, so that's page 32 of the document. And I, I mentioned this in the work session, just have that heartburn where we have these holidays fall on different days and taking extra time off. And so I would propose and suggest that we modify that language. And this goes right to Brad's comments about trying to balance it. And hopefully this doesn't come across the employees too harsh, but on the holiday pay that if the holiday lands on a Saturday, then we take the Friday off. But if it lands on a Friday, that we don't take a holiday, that you don't get that Thursday off. Does that make sense? Because in other words, those working the 410 shift um, and those that aren't, you're not equal there. So the secretaries at the front desk of the administration technically get two paid holidays if the holiday falls on a Friday. Does that make sense? because it'll be closed on that holiday, plus they're gonna get that Thursday off. So I just think because of the uniqueness of what we have, some 410s and, and some not 410s, that we just say if it falls on that Friday, um, there's no Thursday off, but if it falls on that Saturday, then they can take the Friday off. If it falls on a Sunday, then they take the Monday off. Okay. And, and that, that may have some budget ramifications, which we can work through. Um, for the positive the, or for the negative? Um, we will have to pay the holiday either way, and then they will be working that week, a full week. So they will get a 40 hour work week because they'll work 40 plus get paid for the holiday. I guess my point would be if someone's taking and they're working four tens and the holiday's on a Friday, say July 4th is on Friday, they get paid for their 40 hours, but they do not get paid on July 4th. File on a day off. Now, if it fell on a Saturday, then they get that Friday off. So I don't think, I think you're not gonna have any budget implications that direction. I, I may be misunderstanding you, but I think what you're concerned about is that there's some double dippy going in because you're getting paid for the Thursday before the holiday, and then you're getting paid Friday of the holiday. Is that, am I understanding that right? I don't think that's accurate. I think that you're getting paid on Thursday, the day you're taking the holiday for Friday. You're not getting paid for Friday. You already had that day off anyway. So you're just getting paid your normal work week. So Thursday is essentially the day they're taking the holiday that is Friday. Sudden we're down to a three day work week as a city and um, while it's great to have some on-call staff as Danny mentioned before that can create some problems when you've got timelines that got to be met so 
maybe this isn't one that we take up right now, but it is one that I think we need to have future discussion on uh, and taking a look at that. I've never been a big fan of the four tens, to be honest with you. I know that doesn't sit well with probably a lot of the employees that enjoy the 410 schedule, but I just think if we're in the business of providing the best level of service possible, we really ought to look at being open on Fridays. I don't think we get a lot of benefit other than maybe a employee benefit by going to the 410. The other one that I wanted to look at was page 93. Um, it's a little bit back there. This had to do with the um, conflict resolution. And in there, it talks about the order in which it would go. And um, I would like, as we discussed in the work session, to add in that the council uh, would be after the mayor. And again, the hope and intent there would be that nothing ever reaches that point. The ideal way that this would work is that everything would get resolved at the local level. But I just have a worry, and I believe um, that allows us to have that check and a balance on the oversight, um, especially where we are doing the employee evaluation of the city administrator and things of that nature. It helps to, if there was something that serious that came up, that we would have that opportunity. And again, not that I ever would want to see anything get to that level, but that's what I would like to, to see put in there. Um, and then under the termination clause, on you know what? Can I, can yeah. I just let me just stop right there because I think I, I, I'm, I just don't want to get too far ahead of things a little bit. But um, so can we just kind of focus on that item right there? Because I <clears throat> again we don't we never want to see it come to that. But uh, I I would just say is this something as well that we can work through, or, or are you? planning on maybe making this a part of the motion to to work to, to bring this into this uh, manual tonight through a motion yeah just these items here I thought if we were gonna get kind of a baseline I'd like to I'd probably make a motion and add these items into it because I think on this one I think there needs to be some review okay uh, and some some more discussion on it with uh, I don't know if it, whether it be individual in a work session in that review process and I, and I don't want to hold the whole manual up hostage on that but I do think that this one could maybe take some a little more time to consider the ramifications and bring in the council and uh, I don't have a problem with it I just I guess I just don't want to uh, I go I want to gain a better, better understanding about it and why and I think it's in our previous manual that was adopted I think it was the 1992 manual before we adopted just the state whatever it was and we've all got some maybe i can ask pros and cons we can learn about it together maybe can i ask uh david can I ask maybe what you think about about that process again the intent is that uh if there's an issue that we solve it on the lowest possible level and uh you know i have confidence that we'll be able to solve really all those issues most of those issues coming up through but if it does escalate uh, to the level where it, it does reach the mayor's desk, then obviously at that point, the mayor has the discretion to bring that to the council as a body. If he feels like there's uh, more input that needs to be given or that uh, more counsel needs to be received, obviously there's no, there's no caveat in here that the mayor can't take that uh, to the rest of the council, um, get input from the council, um, but the issue is that the, the mayor would have the ability to, to make a final determination so that that process at some point can, can has, have resolution. But, uh, you know, most of that is administrative, um, and then when it hits the mayor, um, the mayor has the ability to bring that to the council as well and communicate those issues. And I like that. The only downside I see is that I think we have to learn from the mistakes of the past without going into too many specifics as I've thought about different issues that we've had in the past. I really believe this is one that's, that's very important um, because we've had issues and grievances that weren't brought up because of fear of retaliatory behavior. And I feel like when you have an independent body that can be able to hear that, that puts some pressure on the administration to make sure that it does get handled at the lowest level, right? No one wants it to rise above where it needs to. And then if it does rise to that, hopefully we're all on the same working page that 
I don't think we'd see anything different, but I believe it is that fail safe that we have missed in the past because people look up that line and they go, the mayor loves the city administrator, city administrator loves that department head. So if I go up this appeal, it's just a dead path because it's all no independent voice out there. Now, I would hope that that wouldn't be the case and that there would be an independent way of going into it. And again, without going into too many details, you know, something I'm, I'm open to, but as I look at so solving the problems we've had in the past, that's the one thing that I think that really is important that we, we discuss. So I guess I, I'm open to putting it out there, but I don't want to what, put it. What, what would be the language you might suggest to, 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 to introduce into that one? Jump back to that one. So on page 93 there, um, Sorry, did That's I get it? Step four. Step four. Can go down a little bit. Go down a little bit. Nope. Okay, it's step, step number six. So as we look at it, it says, you know, we kind of follow that same language where, um, you know, five working days, submission to him or her, and then I would just strike that decision of the mayor shall be final and binding, and it would go that next step that would be follow the same language that um, if they wasn't resolved, let's see, the same language as we have all above, just inserting in the city council as one extra step in there. So within three working days from the receipt of the written response from the city administrator, or the mayor, the mayor shall present the grievance in writing to the city council accompanied by all correspondence existing evidence in the matter and the mayor shall uh and the council shall meet with the aggrieved employee and will make a determination within five working days or we could put the next scheduled council meeting um, from the date of his or her submission so i just kind of tweak that language what are what are the other guys council members feel about this i i just a lot of silence I don't think the city council should be the appeal board for employee matters. Uh, I'm okay with keeping the appeal board in house. Um, in other words, not having to involve other, other city administrators and stuff like that. But I think um, it has the potential, you know, we have one council now, but you never know what um, future councils are gonna look like. And I think it has the potential to politicize uh, the appeals process, I think we're on um, firmer footing, um, you know, if we don't do that. Having said that, I completely understand with what Councilman Shelton's getting at with some of the issues that we've faced with personnel recently and, um, and with appeals boards and things like that. So I certainly see where you're coming from, Councilman Shelton. That's my input. Just to clarify, it wouldn't be replacing the appeal board. So the appeal board would still be made up of outside individuals, as my understanding as this document is. All I'm saying is if there's a grievance that hasn't been resolved all the way through, that um, the council get a crack at it at that point. I, uh, this is pretty complicated, the whole idea. It should never get to this point. I, I, and if it does, we've got problems bigger than that, in my mind. But I think ultimately the city residents expect the council to make sure things go right. And um, we're accountable to them once every two years or four years, however you want to call it, where um, staff are not. So I think uh, by having this in there, uh, it, it gives a little more, um, it's not transparency, but a little more uh, veracity, a little more authority to it saying somebody that's elected that's not an employee of the city has looked at this. In fact, not only somebody, a committee of, of five people. I understand Councilman Bowen's concern, uh, but I, my concern, about his issues don't raise to the level that I would not be supportive of this. I would hope and pray literally that we would never have to use it. But 
I don't think it would hurt to have it in there just as a final recourse. I can't say what I want to say about the appeals boards because this meeting is being recorded. <laughs> um, and, and I think when you get five people on a council that are elected by the city, they represent the views of the city and, and I find it hard for uh, a majority of those people at any one time in a community as small as ours to go too far astray from what the city employees would, or the city residents and the employees would expect and deserve. So uh, bottom line, I'm in favor of just putting that council step in there between the mayor and the appeals board. I think it gives us one more chance to keep it in house. I don't like to air my dirty laundry any more than I have to. And sometimes when you get out of an in-house situation, somehow news media gets a hit a word on that and and we don't want to end up on the front page of the newspaper ever unless it's good well i feel sorry that i you feel that things have been so poorly mishandled because i don't I, there's been some very difficult decisions been made by the city in personnel matters over the past several years it hasn't just been recently but uh i will tell you this i feel that the city's in better shape today than it has ever been and some very difficult decisions have been made involving personnel matters. And uh, uh, if that's what the council wants to do, by golly, I wish him luck. But the comment to make that the mayor has too many friends and the council needs to be the objective viewer, I don't think the council has any friends. So maybe that's a good idea. So. Well, and I, I didn't mean for that to come across that Neither way did I, at all. I, I, I totally agree with you that we're in better shape than we have been. But I think that we have to take a look at issues and problems that have arised, and we say, how do we ensure that this doesn't happen in the future? And what was the root cause of that problem? And um, Well, a couple, the majority of those were a result of bad advice from an HR director. Which would uh, allow us to understand that when it comes to the council level, and hopefully that would put pressure on whoever staff is handling that to make sure it gets handled before it gets to the council level. My preference would be not to have the council involved. I think I'd, I think we need to have it handled uh, by the mayor and the through the appeals board. That's my position. Okay, two councils say no. Two councils say yes. Councilman uh, Frost. No, I agree. I think I think that I like that that's written. written. As it is written in this uh, in the manual, All right. again I think I hope it never gets to that point. But uh, I think there's been some real foresight into this, and I'm comfortable with it. And if it doesn't work, we can amend it and put ourselves in if we need to. Okay. And then the other item I had was on uh, page. How to do with the termination. Uh, page 100 item 2b so as we look at that it says in the event of an involuntary termination a notice of termination form signed by the employee and the department director of the employee shall be executed and retained in the employee personnel file um, I don't see where this gives us I'm going to use the term seasoning requirements that may be there for due process issues so the only thing that I would say is in the event of an involuntary termination, um, the notice of termination would be given and they would be given paid leave for a period of time and the best I could come up with a two to three days to file that appeal process um, where we haven't had that in the past and it's bitten us. Doesn't state law give him 21 days to file an appeal? Uh, the, the 21 days applies to discrimination based on age, um, that they have that chance to withdraw it. I was trying to formulate this in my mind. Um, are, you're talking about the, and I'm drawing a blank on the name, the due process pre hearing, the pre-termination hearing, louder mill hearing, that's what I was looking for, is specifically putting that in there that um, that would apply, ladder mill would apply not only to terminations, but it would also apply to suspensions. 
that are beyond two days. So, and it should be in there, but I wonder if we should have it in a different spot. And is there a seasoning that you feel is legal counsel's better? Is it two, three business days? What, what's the necessary time to be able to file an appeal? for that seasoning to take oh, place. They, they need more than two days to file an appeal, and we've got the time period in there. Are, you're just talking about what you want to compensate them for while they have that time? I guess I'm looking at that. I didn't see that in there. Perhaps I'm misreading the document. I think they have 10 days. I think it's earlier. It's so we're going over termination procedures. I think we're looking at, let's flip up the discipline. Okay. And if we go up to, I'm just scrolling up. So it's F on page 95. Okay. So I think that's going to address it. Um, we've got the exceptions in there. But I think those are the triggering events. Discharge suspended for more than two days without pay or involuntarily transferred one, from one position to another. So it's there that those are the triggers for the employee rights. Okay. As far as what you can have. So if we drop down, and then it talks about the appeal. And you've got that, that they can appeal that decision. We've got the board there that's set in place. So you're with me now? I am, but I'm still looking for the seasoning requirement. Which, when because you say what's, seasoning. Because what's happened in the past is a termination letter is given to an employee. Right, no, I think we need to add that in. I don't think that okay. part was in there. That, that's all I'm mentioning. Oh, is I thought I, you were talking about the 10 days. It's no, I'm just talking that the seasoning, how long do they need to appeal that termination letter because they need a time to be able to address that termination letter, is my understanding. Yeah, but um, I don't, uh, under the law, you don't have to put in a time period. You, you could. The law just requires that there be a, an opportunity to be heard before the action's taken. I understand that. But and you want to put one in, is what you're well, saying. Well, three strikes are out, so I'm looking at our track record, and I'm saying we need something that's going to go back beyond the line where we have been. And what is that, one, two days? Because we You can pick it, because it doesn't have to, whatever you think is an appropriate time. Is, it, is there a restriction that we we're going to place by putting a time on it, Casey? Is it, does it restrict us in any way? Um, that makes sense? Well, it's going to, whatever time period you, if I'm understanding Councilman Shelton correctly, what he's going to say is, let's say we give an employee um, notice and say, we're going to take disciplinary action against you. These are the reasons that we are going to take that action. We are, um, want to give you an opportunity to be heard, and we're going to set a hearing um, uh, not less than two days, not more than t t 10 days, something along those lines. Um, I don't think that hurts you unless you put in the requirement that, that it's going to be paid during that time period. The law doesn't require that it be paid. In fact, it, it almost wouldn't be a triggering event if it was a suspension. If it was, well, it could be. I'm thinking down the road. So that would be the, what do you want? Do you want to set a requirement that says that um, within two days, I mean, not earlier than two days, but not more than 10 days, that they will have their louder mill hearing, so to speak. Now that's going to put tighter restrictions on you than is under the law, but, and when I say you, I mean all of us as a city. I'm just going off what the appeal board has given, and I think we need some guardrails now to be able to say what we're going to do going forward so we don't get caught like we have in the past, so. I think you could, and I know you're coming from, obviously we've been through this battle together, but I think you could handle that by eternally, internally taking care of it without necessarily putting it in your policy and procedures manual, but you're fine to put it in there. Right, I'm just going back to three strikes. We need to take a look at it and say, anyway, I feel strongly that we need to have that in there. I look at two paid days compared to the ramifications of not meeting those requirements is a small price to pay to make sure that we follow every letter of the law and give the employee every opportunity 
to make sure that their rights are taken care of. So I'm, I guess I'm willing to I go a little it, more stringent. I, th I think it's a, it's a, it's a it's so, worthy. But I think we need to clarify. Are you saying that they're paid for two days? Right. So they come in and they give you the termination letter, right? Mm -hmm. And or suspension letter or whatever it may be. Um, at that point, go on administrative leave for two days while it's paid so you can be able to review and decide if you want to have that hearing or not. And I think that would meet the due process requirements of the appeal boards that we've had issues with in the past. Um, Is that and you would meet the requirements whether you give the two days of pay or not. And I'm, I'm not saying one way or the other. I'm just saying you'd meet the requirements without the pay or with the pay. And when you say requirements, you're talking state requirements, correct? Yeah. Actually, I think it's state and federal on due process. I think that just gives us a stronger case if it ever is appealed for that reason going forward that um, we went over and beyond and um, it would give us a stronger foundation if we really felt that was a justification and it was to be upheld. So, Council member, um, that might be appropriate in on page 91. So this would be, um, this is chapter 9, B6, and then little b. So that's on page 91, under the section termination. And uh, maybe what we could do is modify that section that says before the effective date or the termination. Uh, then we furnish the employee with the termination notification and then right after that, we add something in there which provides for the due process time period to make sure that it's vetted right there. I'm okay with that. It doesn't matter where it goes. I was just looking under the termination procedures because if I was someone that was being terminated, I would probably go to that section. The, what's the procedures for the proper way to terminate somebody? But either way, I think it would be fine. Those are my comments. Any other comments for the staff to consider in adopting this manual? Mayor, I had a couple, but I'll just uh, limit it to one. Because of the time. Uh, I have that set up. Let's go to, uh, in my book, it's an older version. It's uh, page 16 and 17 under under J, which is promotions. Um, I'm looking at an older version, so I've got to find the newer version on the computer. I apologize, I had it once, but. Uh, promotions number J is on 16, it starts. Okay. So, um, J says promotions, and then number one says promotions. Number two says promoted employees. Number three says promoted employees. Number four says promoted employees. And number five says transferred employees. So I think number five's out of place. And then if I go down to the next section, K, uh, sorry, the OCD kicked in again. Um, if I go down to, s I, I've, I've got one typo on a prior page, but I'll, I'll show you that just real quick. Um, when I go to transfers, and if I read item number seven on transferred, I think that's the exact same wording as number five is. I, missed my calling. I should have been a copy editor, right, uh, Barbara? <laughs> So I, I, I think the one under Section J probably just should not be in there. It, it's those stupid computers. I know it's the computers. Um, but I've got a few of those, and, and I would just like to be able to visit with uh, Mr. Good. Bunker about those. Under Section I, um, performance evaluations, Barbara, listen to this close, if you would, please. Any designee shall have advisory duties of an employee for which and performance evaluation is being completed. I think the wording should be for which a performance evaluation should be completed. And Mrs. Hunter would be really pleased that I picked that up. She was the bane of our existence at Viewmont High in the late 60s, early 70s. I won't give the exact years. 
I've got some others again I'll visit with, with you about those. They're kind of little things like that. Just out of curiosity, Kevin, um, did you want to do anything with the week of, of time off? I've done a little research on this, and I've got to, uh, we can throw it out now, yeah. In, in the world that I came from, and, and that world was a long time ago when you worked for big corporations because I'd been self-employed for a while, and I, I've done a little bit of checking uh, with some other places. But it used to be that employees were required, especially if they were in positions where they had um, oversight on money or other things related to that, uh, or certain or, uh, paperwork or whatever. It used to be that employees were required to take an entire week off once a year. So they're out of the office for five days. And the reason for that was because if you're out of the office for five days, you better have somebody covering for your work or there's really no need for you to be in that job if nothing, if, if nothing needs to be done for a five-day period. But the real uh, point behind that was to make try and get a second set of eyes to make sure that money was being accounted for, or procedures were being followed, or whatever. Um, that's a philosophical discussion uh, probably for a later time, but maybe now's a good time to just to bring it up. I personally think it's a great idea because if you've got an employee that's using one or two days every couple of weeks, yeah, they're burning, and we've got controls on how much they can accumulate, and, and I talked to one individual who said he thinks that kind of takes care of it because after a certain point, but that takes quite a few years to get to that max. But up till that point, uh, there's a chance for potential abuse, and, uh, and before I go any further, before I forget, this is great work. I appreciate it. I know it's a lot of work, and it's hard to put stuff out there and let people take pot shots, people like me take pot shots at it because um, I've been there, done that. But I just think it's something we ought to discuss is whether or not that's a worthwhile concept of having. And, and Casey, I don't know if that's a legal thing you can do even anymore or whatever, um, but maybe some things ought to be looked into on that idea. Yeah, I don't know the answer to that. That's what I was thinking in my mind. I, <laughs> I'm not sure if it's legal or not, so we'll look into yeah, it. Yeah, we'll give you an assignment to look if you don't mind. Well, you know, and I, I think that goes back, you know, I, I agree with you. There needs to be definitely those controls, and, and I understand where you're coming from there. One thing I would look to is um, we would like to propose to the council at some point, Kyle hasn't had a chance to, but he and I have had this discussion on, on how we have some policies and guidelines for a financial basis in the city and how we ensure that there's checks and balances and controls in every department. Now, obviously, we get an audit every single year. Um, some companies, private companies, don't have to have the same level of audit that a, a government agency must have like we do. Um, now that doesn't catch everything because auditors can't spend every waking moment here. They can't, they can't look at everything. But what they can do is they can go in and review how the checks and balances are secured and, and how we make sure that there's uh, um, some controls in place to make sure one person doesn't have that ability. Now, does it still happen? Yeah, it still happens. Um, but that's one of the things that Kyle and I have talked about in getting a, a policy together on making sure that we address that. And I, I think the changes that have been made and the signatures that are required have been a good step. I'm, I'm just thinking some town in southern Utah or a county within the last year or something made the news because somebody had gotten a little more salary than they were entitled to, but it really wasn't salary. It was stolen money, I think. And, and again, we just don't, we trust our employees and everything else, but one bad apple can really cause you a lot of problems. So just would like to have discussion on that concept, whether it's now or in a work session or whenever. That's another annual training that we are also gonna start doing within the city is is fraud prevention because we take it very seriously we want our employees to understand how serious we take that um, and Kyle will be leading up that that discussion and and how the city actively 
investigates for fraud and how we are going to take you know steps to prevent that things that we're going to look for we're going to be open and transparent to our employees that we will be looking for that and uh, in cooperation with our auditors and the finance department um, that will be a required annual training for every employee you know I, I would just say uh, you know we've talked a lot about tonight we've talked about some of the we've gotten into some minutia some of the things that are not so good as far as employee matters but I think everybody knows that we've been dealing with some of these things now for the better part of a year but what I would hope that maybe the takeaway for the employees would be, for those that are here, those that can go back to their departments, will be that this document is a protection to them. It's literally contractual in a way that it protects them. Uh, and there are some great benefits in there. It protects the citizens. And even though we might have spent some time talking about some of the worst case scenarios tonight, there's some really good case scenarios in here as well, and, and I've read through them, and I think that there's a, they're fair and balanced. And so with that, I'm going to make a motion to adopt the ordinance approving the American Fork City's Policies and Procedure Manual. And Councilman Shelton, I, I don't know if you want to add anything to that motion as far as uh, you know, you know, due process. Can I take a stab at it real quick? Um, the in uh, T1 where we talk about the um, outside business activities that we remove the word and I'm sorry the word may after the word and as we discussed so it will go into the employees file um, and that uh, we look at the um, termination clause I, I don't know where we want to put that in I'm going to say that's going to be under the termination procedures under 2b that um, they be given two paid days leave uh, to be able to file an appeal. Is that the right language there, but you don't, Casey? Or you, you don't want to let. I don't think you want to only give them two days to file the appeal. I think you, is that. I think you need to give them at least ten days. So two to ten days, not less than two, but not more than ten. That's fine. Yeah. And how would that be set in that? Well, I think what you're saying is you want to give them two paid days, uh -huh. but I, I think we need to give them at least 10 to file the appeal. So they can say, if you want to say they've got two days paid off, two paid days off, but then they have two, not less than 10, not less than two, but not more than 10 days to appeal. Okay. How's that? <laughs> question are those calendar days or are those work days is the question I had every time let's I just saw, go with work days I think that's every time fair. I saw the number of days uh, through the whole document I wondered if it's work days or calendar maybe days. we could define that at the beginning of the maybe, document yeah, definition well, you know it can whatever. vary um, depending on what what issue you're talking about I know in the work session we talked about uh, the appeals process and how if those were work days or calendar days we went back in and clarified that those are work days so in conjunction with this Casey I just maybe as we're looking at the motion um, adding the word that this would be calendar two calendar days and and two ten calendar oh, you want days. to go calendar oh, or did you say on the appeal yeah is that what you were so I may have misunderstood what your recommendation no was. that was it I'm just thinking yeah, that's good. That's good. I just wanted to think through it. Okay. Yes. I just had okay. to think through that. I have a motion by Councilman Frost as modified by Councilman Shelton. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Councilman Shorter. Any questions on this motion? Hearing none, I will take a voice vote. Councilman Barnes. Aye. Councilman Bowen. Nay. Councilman Frost. Aye. Councilman Shelton. Aye. Councilman Shorter. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Item number nine, review and action on an ordinance creating a new chapter, the American Fork City Code relating to the transfer of money or property on a roadway. This was discussed in our recent work session. Are there any additional questions of the council on this item? Mayor, I'd move to adopt an ordinance creating a new chapter of the American Fork City Code regulating the transfer of money of or property on roadway with instructions to the city recorder to number the sections to be consistent with the city code. Thank you for that motion, Councilman Frost. Is there a second? Second. 
I'll second. Seconded by Councilman Shelton. Any questions on this motion? Just one quick one, if I may. Is this okay with the guys in blue? Okay, thank you. This is a creative way, maybe. I don't know. This is designed to kind of address a panhandling situation, I assume. That isn't the word you wanted to use, is it? I, I think what this is any time of activity. So it could be a lemonade stand that's on the corner of one of these busy streets. It could be someone selling anything at that point, any kind of vendor. It could um, be a fireman in the roadway passing the boot for the M <laughs> <laughs> muscular dystrophy <laughs> program. So, so I think the, the concern here is more about the safety more than it is the activity. That's exactly right. Is it limited just to the busy areas? Because I'm all for panhandling in the unbusy areas. So, okay. There are some listed streets, as I remember, in this one, aren't That's there? That's correct. Isn't that where they were? I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? I will call for a voice vote on item number nine transfer of money or property on a roadway. Cosma Barnes. Aye. Councilman Bowen. Nay. Councilman Frost. Aye. Councilman Shelton. Aye. Councilman Shorter. Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. We are down to item number 10. Review an action on a contract with Hanson Wright for several legal services. Mayor, I had about 10 pages of notes I wanted to go through on this contract. Okay. <laughs> you want to come up to the stand? And <laughs> I think there was a typo that was in that con. No, I'm just joking. Is there no um, CD thing in here? We got to find out. I didn't read this one that close. It sorry. can't be bad. It's only two pages. Yeah, <laughs> I, I did comment on that, I think, the other day that I'd never seen an attorney do anything in two pages. So I was very impressed. I appreciate the work that uh, Hanson Wright ha has done for the city. Um, I remember first coming on the council, we had authorized a study to be done by a very reputable judge um, and showed that we are getting below market uh, rates for the services that are being rendered and that we're getting a very, very good deal for the services. And so with that, I have no problem moving forward to authorize the mayor to sign the civil legal services contract with Hanson Wright. Thank you for that motion, Councilman Shelton. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Councilman Barnes. Any discussion on this motion? You know, I would just say, I would just like to thank you as well, Casey, Sherilyn, and then uh, I know that beyond the two of you is a wonderful staff. If you would project that appreciation to your entire staff. Thank you. I had just a, a couple of comments. Um, number one on the background, it says that the contract uh, was presented in 2007 and included an hourly rate to be charged for services. But just in the last year or two, we have amended that contract and increased the rate. Um, I came on the council in 2013, January of 2014 actually, but, um, and then my other comment was I just have concerns about the person that's representing us legally uh, negotiating and drawing up their own contract. It seems to me like an inherent conflict of interest. Um, not trying to dig on, on you, Casey, or your firm or anything, just a concern I have there. Can, can I jump in right there? Um, I asked I asked Casey to come up with the, the boilerplate for that, and so he did work directly with me to come up with that contract, and I actually put together the memo here. And in the 2007, let me just clarify, every single hour was billed, and it, it's, it's sometimes cumbersome when there's so many issues going on and then it's an hourly rate for every one of those issues. And so they went to a flat fee, they went to a monthly fee. And so I apologize if that wasn't clear, but that's, that's really the, the, the major change that happened is that they went from an hourly rate to a monthly rate. We get a great value. It covers you know, all of our needs on a monthly basis. Unless we unless we have litigation, unless there's another issue that we have to go to court on, then then obviously we would then go back to an hourly rate on that, and it's uh, it's clarified and it's a great rate as well. Um, but I did ask Casey to go ahead and, and draft something simple. 
he did that. I reviewed that, and I put that in the packet. So just right. so you know. And no offense, but I assume you don't really have a legal background, right? You know what? It's true, and I'm not as OCD as Councilmember Barnes, so I, I missed the word years in the initial draft. I apologize. <laughs> I, I certainly respect your um, professional engineering background um, and uh, managerial abilities. Um, in your review of the contract, Councilman Bowen, were there any concerns about a conflict of interest in there at all? Well, I, the other thing I just wanted to clarify was um, this is just for our civil legal services, right? The that's correct. Separate for the uh, criminal attorney that's basically the public defender. No. no. There's two. There's a prosecutor as well. And I think the prosecutor contract probably needs to come forward at some point, too. This was the first one. Okay. But this this one is only civil it doesn't include the public defender or the prosecutor correct okay i just I, want to echo real quick some of the good things that have been said um we give you a lot of crap and you give it back to us <laughs> and uh, i don't know a better word than that i can't use that a full a full word that was in one of the prior contracts whatever it is but i appreciate the relationship and i appreciate the fact that when i'm out of line you tell me and uh, that you feel comfortable in doing that and that we're able to have open, honest discussions because I think that's the way uh, we move this city forward and it's the proper way to do things. So again, thanks to you, to Sherilyn, and to everybody else. Casey, right. it looks like to me on the contract it can be terminated by either party with 60 days notice, right? So, okay, I have no heartburn then with Very good, Councillor, thank you. I have a motion and a second. I will call for a voice vote on item number 10, legal civil services contract with Hanson and Wright. Councilman Barnes. Aye. Councilman Bowen. Nay. Councilman Frost. Aye. Councilman Shelton. Aye. Councilman Shorter. Aye. Motion carries, thank you. Item number 11 is adjourned. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn and also thank my fellow council members and all you that attended today for putting up with my long-windedness tonight. So thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Is there a second? I'll second the adjourning, not necessarily the long-windedness. Okay. <laughs> all in favor, say aye. aye. We are adjourned. <laughs>